Hello. So today we're going to be going over a gameplay of Demousey's Mobs. So here we have the first Throtnaut's dungeon area. It's found underground, and you have him summoned. Now, you're going to need quite a bit of healing, and also some diamond tools and armor. So, when I have some night vision on just to make it a little more visible. So, when you go up to him, he'll slam the ground and make you go flying. He has really slow speed, but when attacking him, you can't properly hit him unless he's, he hits his axe to the ground, or you can hit him in the back where the sword is. You can't attack him at any other point, and it's best to go behind him whenever this happens because he does loads of damage even with full diamond on. So when he does that swing attack, he will attack twice or once or he will do a spin attack. As you can see there, he did it only once. You really have to be careful with his hits, although he's pretty slow, he can do loads and loads of damage, insta-killing you even with like, weak enough armor. This is why you should almost always have another mod installed <coughs> to have some better armor. <coughs> okay. So I'm just going to quickly defeat him and show you what he drops. So this is his death animation and he drops his axe and his helmet. So next up we have the Sun Chief. Now the reason why I'm all the way over here for the Sun Chief is because of his long ranged attack. He shoots beams from the sky. Now it's basically the same sort of deal with the Ferris Throat Knot. But instead, if you ever go into the savannah, you can actually fight some of these Barakoa, which drop masks. It's best to have one on because they give you an effect, and it also allows you to go up to the Sun Chief without being attacked. It's best to also have some potions, especially strength and fire resistance, to go into the battle with, just so that it's just so that you can actually not get attacked by most of its attacks. Hmm. So, when you go up to the tribal area, I don't actually know the proper name for what the area is called, you will notice that nothing will attack you while you have the, the mask on. These Barakoa do also spawn in, in this area. Let me just get my inventory ready. They do also spawn in in this tribal area. So when you go up to the Sun Chief, <clears throat> you can actually trade five gold blocks for an item known as Sun's Blessing. <clears throat> it will be explained in the next video. Now, it's best to have a fire resistance potion on because all of its attacks are fire based. Well, sun based. As you can see here, all of them also deal knock knockback. All these attacks would nearly instantly kill me if I didn't have this fire resistance on. Bows, if I remember correctly, do actually work on the bar coat on the sun chief but you can almost just stay at a distance and kill him really easily. So it's best to do it with a sword just to have more of a fight. You should also bring quite a bit of healing to this fight due to how much, well, minimal damage, but still quite a bit that he does. If you notice around you, you can see a different kind of block that's a painted acacia. So, 
When you kill him, the Sun Chief, he'll do an animation and he'll drop the soul via Sage. I know I said that incorrectly. But next up we have this Defrola. Lives in the jungle in every kind of biome, but it's pretty rare, so I'll be using spawn eggs to spawn it in. Now, you don't really need armor for this mob due to the way you attack it. It drops Philaeth seeds, which are really rare, drop from it. The Frolif will open up and is a carnivorous plant. You'll see a bush, like a weirdly shaped one, but whenever you go and attack it, you'll do three hearts of damage, or five. The way to kill it is with two shots of an arrow. This is the only way to attack it where swords don't actually work. The Frolif seeds are actually a really, really rare drop from the Frolif, mainly due to looting not being able to go onto a bow. So next up we have is the, is the Naga. Well, this is a different kind of Naga to the one in the Twilight Forest. But with this one you only really need a bit of armor, a bow, and a sword. You definitely need a bow and a sword for this battle. Although it's flying, that you need it in a specific order. When they spawn in, they spawn in like in extreme hills by him. Whenever they dive onto you, you can sometimes attack with a sword. They dodge almost every arrow hit as well. If the green gas hits you, you get inflicted with poison. So if you hit it with an arrow, you go up to it on the ground and you can attack it. It will drop a naga fang and this is what's used to, to kill it. Next up we have is the Grottle. Now, I'm not actually going to be going through the Lantern D2. Well, it just lives in the roofed forest. Now, the Grottle lives underground and can be attacked only with a pickaxe, where looting will work, or fortune will work as looting to it. Whenever you attack it with a pickaxe, it will it will f go over and give you a diamond. Although they can sometimes run away and despawn, you can, you can also hit it with a fortune pickaxe to gain a few extra diamonds, similar to looting on a sword. Now, it is more common to have them, like, run away but in this case, it's kind of odd that they're not. You can't actually hit them physically, so... Okay, last up we have is the Frost Mole. As I mentioned, I'm not going through the Lantern. Now, you're gonna need, like, some enchanted diamond armor, some healing, and I'll be using the spawn eggs just to get it in. Spawns in every arctic biome, including modded ones. So, let me spawn one in. It will do an animation to show its ice crystal, which is its drop. And even though I have all this protection 1, well, protection 2 diamond armor, it still does a heart of damage. What you want to try and do is stay like more away from it or to be more on a high ground to it although not using a bow due to not working. The reason why that is is because it has a special attack which will be seen a little later. You have to try and keep on hitting it 
just constantly with brute force. But if you ever, like, go into a phase where you can't attack it, it won't, it would just go move back. Now that was its special attack. It does 8 heart to damage and can almost insta-kill you, even with full diamond, without protection. It sometimes is the case whenever you get frozen by the Frost Maw that one of your keys will be held down. Not physically, but you'll, as, I, as you saw there, my golden apples were being constantly eaten. It should, as you can see here, it's best to have an advantage, a high advantage, towards the Frost Maul, due to it being able to constantly knock you down, almost always dealing a heart to damage. When killing the Frost Maul, it will do an animation and drop the Ice Crystal. Again, this will be explained in the next video. And so, other than the Lantern, which is just a jelly in the roofed forest. That's about it for the, for the Mousies mobs. Go for the next video to find the items.